What's up guys, welcome to another tutorial Linux video. This one's going to be on access control in Linux. Uh, finally, we're starting to get to some interesting stuff. This is going to lay the foundation for a lot of the later videos, so it's important that you understand this stuff. Everything in Linux is an object, and objects have owners. Generally, you own the objects that you create. That is, every user owns the objects that he or she creates. There is uh, an admin account, sort of a super user, called root, and that user can basically act as an owner of any object. Now, objects, uh, processes, or files are, for example, if you launch a Firefox process on your desktop, that Firefox process will spawn one or more processes to do its bidding. But that Firefox process doesn't have any more permissions than the user that launched it because that process is running with the permissions of that user as that user. There's lots of things that require special privileges or admin privileges. So that, that would be the root account. And that's things like starting processes that are going to use privileged network ports. So network ports under 1024. Uh, changing system configuration, starting, restarting, changing, stopping services that are running as root, so they're sort of system processes, uh, mounting new file systems. There's some exceptions to this, but um, there is sort of an auto mount function so that if you, like in Ubuntu, you plug in a new USB stick, um, it could be auto mounted for you, but only in a certain place. So if you want to mount file systems in some arbitrary location, you have to be root to do that. Likewise, unmounting file systems is the same. So those are things only root can do. So if I open a terminal and just, uh, well, where am I? Yeah. Let's go back to root and do a long listing. So list dash L. You can see everything that's in the root directory. You can see the ownership here. It's owned by the user root. And this is the group root. So all users belong to some group and the super user, the group is named the same as the user itself. These you can see are the permissions uh, and we'll talk about that in an upcoming video. But basically this first bit here, D means it's a directory, L means it's a link, there's a couple other types that we'll talk about. But uh, there you go. So you can see root owns this. Now, if I go to my home folder, which I could do by doing this or just by typing CD or by typing CD tilde. So now I'm home. If I do a long listing here, you can see these things are owned by me. Generally, when you create a new user on a sort of standalone system, like your desktop system, that user will have a group all to him or herself. So the Dave user has the group Dave, and if you create another user named Nancy, generally that automatically will also create a group called Nancy that has one user as part of it, and that user would be Nancy. Um, in production use, so on larger systems where there are lots and lots of users, you'll generally have different groups that have different levels of permissions to do stuff, in different places to different objects, so different files generally. Um, so you could have like an HR group or a you know management group. And then you would have specific users that are part of those groups. We'll look at setting up users and modifying the groups that they're in in a later video. But that should give you an idea now, right? So files and processes generally have a user attached to them. They're running as some user. So if I just run HTOP to monitor the processes, this sorts automatically by percent of the CPU that a process is using. You can see on the left here, the user it's running at. So this is the process ID and the user. You can see, you know, things like init, which is always has PID1, the first process that the kernel starts. It's always, always belongs to root, runs as root. So it can do things that only root can do. These processes here, user bin, vbox client, drag and drop. I think this supports drag and drop between my host machine and the guest machine. These are things that are running as an unprivileged user, uh, Dave. So Dave user only has control inside of slash home slash Dave inside of his home directory. So that's part one. 
Uh, in the next video, we'll talk about where specific files are kept that configure users and groups. Uh, in general, you can always see who you are by saying, who am I? Or ID, this will give you um, your user ID, your group ID, the ID of your group, and then a list of the groups that you're in. So for example, you can see I'm actually a member of several groups. I'm a member of the Dave group. I'm a part of the ADM group. I should be sudoer. Yep. So that means I can call root commands with sudo. I can mount CD-ROMs. I can mount devices. I think this is, has to do with uh, line printing. So printers, I have printer rights. I have Samba rights. So I can share files. And these are a lot of the conveniences that Ubuntu provides because Ubuntu is really designed for desktop systems, at least the version I have installed here. So you can see, basically, objects, that is processes and files in Linux, have owners. You own the objects that you create, which is processes you launch or files you create. The admin account is root, and root can do anything valid to any process. So if it's a valid operation on the system, root can do it which basically translates to everything. Uh, and there's lots of things that only root can do. That is root or, for example, a user that can execute things as root by doing sudo or sudo, super user do. To list things, do a long listing, and that'll show you who owns it. That is the owner and the group. And then these are permissions, but we'll get into that later. And in the next video, we'll discuss the specifics of where these things are configured and stored.